Hey everybody, Dr. Nelson here. Uh, this is a video about proportions. All right, so for the first two pages, you're gonna take notes with me, and then you have a chance to pause the video and try some problems on your own, and then at the end, you can see how you did. All right, so what exactly is a proportion? Well, here's kind of the definition. A, a proportion is a name that we give to state that two ratios are equal, all right? So let's write that down. So a name that we give to state that two ratios are equal. All right, now again, anytime you hear the word ratios, you can think of fractions, all right? So anytime we have two fractions are equal, okay, we can say they're a proportion. So how do you tell if two ratios are proportional or how do you tell if two ratios are equal? Well, there's different ways of doing this, but I'm gonna show you the most direct way, all right? Something called the cross multiplication method. All right. So if you start, so for example, here we have three fifths and six tenths. And the way you can tell that these fractions are equal is if you cross multiply it. So if I do three times 10, I get 30. And if I do six times five, guess what I get? Yep, I get another 30. All right, because the cross products are the same, you know that those two fractions are equal. So let me show you one that, that where the fractions are not equal. All right, if I try this method, if I do two times seven, I get 14. Well, if I do four times three, that gives me 12. And because 12 does not equal 14, I know that these fractions are not equal. All right, so this method is called the cross uh, product method. All right, so let's turn the page. So let's say, for example, we have two ratios that are equal, so they're proportion, okay? And we're missing one of the parts. So here we have 1 sixth equals x over 24. So I wanna know what this number has to be, okay, to make it so this fraction equals 1 sixth, okay? So there's different ways of doing this, but I'm gonna show you, in my opinion, the fastest way. So we know that if we cross multiply, the products are gonna be the same, right? So I know that one times 24, it's gonna equal six times x, which is six x, right? So now what we can do is we can use algebra to get the x by itself. So this is six times x, so the opposite of timesing by six is dividing by six. And now when I solve for x, 24 divided by six is four. And there's the answer, all right? So when in doubt, right, write an equation by, by stating the, the cross products and then solve for the unknown. All right, finally, let me show you how we can use proportions, all right, in a word problem. So here's the problem, it says, Bruce has practice two out of every seven days. How many practices will he have over the next 49 days? So the hard thing about this is setting up your ratios. All right, the solving part I think is pretty easy. So we know that Bruce has two practices out of every seven days. So that's gonna be a ratio, right? So it's gonna be two practices for every seven days. Now, here's the part you really gotta pay attention to, all right? To write this ratio over here, you always wanna have the same labels. So if practices is on the top of this fraction, practices needs to be over here. So practices. And then if days is on the bottom, well, days needs to be on the bottom of this ratio. All right, now the last part we do is we, we plug in the, the other information that we know. So the question says, how many practices will he have over the next 49 days? So we're trying to figure out how many practices they're gonna be. So that's gonna be the unknown. So we're gonna use N for the unknown or I could use X or any other letter. And then it's 49 days, so the 49 goes next to the, the days. Now that we have our two ratios, we can, we can use the uh, method over here, okay, to solve for it. So I know that two times 49 is gonna equal seven times N, and then two times 49 is 98, that should be an N, excuse me. So 98 equals seven N. Now, if I divide both sides by seven, so 98 divided by seven gives us 14. So that's the value you're working for, all right? So the key thing about using proportions is make sure you set up your ratios with the same labels, okay? Plug in what you know 
and then use a little bit of algebra to solve for the unknown. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and try the your turn now problems. And when you're done, hit play. You can see how you did. All right, good luck. All right, welcome back. Let's say you do these practice problems. All right, so the first one you're trying to solve for x, right? And we know that 7 eighths is going to equal x over 40. So I'm going to solve for x by writing the equation. So I know that 7 times 40, okay, is going to be 280. And 280 is going to equal, well, 8 times x is 8x. And then when I divide both sides by 8, I end up with x equals 35. All right, so that's the solution for the first, first problem. All right, the second problem is a little more... A little more advanced because uh, it's a word problem. So it says, in a shipment of 400 parts, 400 are found to be defective. Defective means that they don't, they don't work. How many defective parts should be expected in a shipment of 1,000? All right. So this right here is our first ratio, right? We know that 14 out of 400 don't work. So we could say 14 uh, defective. For every 400 total, right? So that's our ratio. And now we need to write the second ratio. And the question is, how many defective parts should be expected in a shipment of a thousand, right? So that a thousand is going to be the total. And then the X or the unknown is going to be up here on the top. But let's write down the label defective. All right. So now that we have our, our ratios, we can solve. So I know that four time, uh, 400 times n is 400n, and that's going to equal 14 times 1,000, which is 14,000. And now to solve for n, I'm going to divide both sides by 400, and it's absolutely fine to use a calculator for that. And 14,000 divided by 400 gives us 35, so actually we have the same answer for both problems. So out of 1,000 parts, we can expect 35 to be defective. All right, how'd you do?